as you're all aware that we are shortly expecting Shrimati Smriti Zubin Irani to join her here in our midst. She is expected to join us shortly. The Honorable Minister for Women and Child Development and Minority Affairs is due to arrive any moment at the venue here in our midst. So once again, I'll request you all to please kindly take your seats. Members of the audience who are still moving about the house, please try and take your seats as quickly as possible. Once again, a gentle reminder, please do remember to either switch off your cell phones or put them on silent mode. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our privilege and honor to welcome here in our midst the Honorable Minister Shrimati Smriti Zubin Irani, the Honorable Minister for Women and Child Development, Minority Affairs. A very, very warm welcome to the Honorable Minister, ma'am. May I request her first to kindly light the ceremonial lamp and to do the honors, may I also request Sri Ashok Ghosh, Sri Pranab Gupta, Sri Ramesh Mittal, Dr. Ashok Gupta and Sri Naveen Gupta to please join in the lamp lighting ceremony. We would like to share with our international guests that we are kick-starting the celebrations here today with the lighting of the ceremonial lamp as per Indian tradition and culture. It symbolizes new and auspicious beginnings. So let's bow down our heads in obeisance to Lord Almighty.
that beautiful rendition and invoking the blessings of Goddess Saraswati, the Goddess of Knowledge and Wisdom, it's time to take this program further forward. It gives me great pleasure to invite on stage Sri Ramesh K. Mittal, but before that, a brief introduction to the honored dignitary. He is a visionary leader with over five decades of unwavering dedication and has profoundly shaped India's publishing landscape. He is also the president of the Federation of Indian Publishers, and it is my honor to invite him to kindly deliver the welcome address. Please welcome with a round of applause. Good morning to everyone. Honorable Shrimati Smriti Rani Ji, Minister of Women and Child Development and Minority Affairs, Government of India. Shri Ashok Ghosh Ji, our President Emeritus, fellow colleagues from FIP, dignitaries, publishers, and other stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Federation of Indian Publishers, I welcome you all to this conference, which has been convened to mark its Golden Jubilee celebrations. I also welcome those who have made their presence virtually or through messages. When some of us personally met Honorable Shrimati Irani Ji in the beginning of this year, we were quite impressed by her knowledge about publishing. Her interest in the presentation and preservation and conservation of our literary heritage, as well as our language, languages, is commendable. We are wholeheartedly obliged to her for being among us this morning, despite her extremely busy schedule and the ongoing parliament session. The idea of forming and setting up of this All India Federation was mooted by stalwarts of the publishing industry back in 1973 to address the problems and to ensure that we are able to attain world standards in terms of book production. We have among us Shri Ashok Ghoshji, one of the founder members of the FIP, who has been very active on publishing related issues all these years. The publishing industry has been growing despite several challenges and shortcomings. And we are now at number three in the world in terms of total number of books being published, and second in terms of publishing in English language. The newly introduced national education policy supporting education in Indian languages, which will further enhance the entire publishing ecosystem. Moreover, as the literary, literacy go, grows, grows so will the demand for books continue to grow. We are also actively associated with uh, the Indian International Publishers Association as the na only national body of publishers from India. The Secretary General of IPA, Mr. Jose Borghino, has come all the way from Geneva for attending this conference. He is also very welcome. Now I'm coming to the central theme of this conference, which is India 2047, role of publishing in nation building. The Indian publishing industry echoes with the thoughts of our Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi ji, who has time and again discussed about the importance of books and reading. The publishing industry contributes to the thoughtful initiatives, Padega Bharat, Badega Bharat, Skill India, Knowledge Economy, Knowledge Society, Digital India, and the like. One of my publisher friends recently gave a thoughtful point, point to ponder over. Back in the olden days when Guru Shishya Parampara existed, Guru would bring about a major change in the lives of his pupils by bringing them out of darkness to enlightenment, which means Andhakar se Prakash Kyor. To publish literally means in Hindi, Prakashit Karna, to enlighten. As such, publishers together with teachers and authors have contributed to the enlightenment and development of in all spheres of life. Had our stalwart publishers like Shri Ghosh not requested Dr. V. Raj Araman back in the 60s to write a book on computer programming, India wouldn't have achieved such a high status in information technologies internationally. If our scriptures were not published and distributed among the masses, the dissemination of knowledge would have been extremely limited. There are numerous examples of publishing world's contribution to the society. And now, it is not that publishing means books and journals in physical form only. We are equally embracing technologies in the form of e-books, audio books, open access, OTT, and the like. Printed world will surely continue to stay among us. With these words, I welcome you all to this two-day Indian Publishers Conference. Thank you. Thank you, Srimathal. Ladies and gentlemen, 
as we have all had the privilege of having in our midst this morning the honorable chief guest honorable shrimati smriti zubinirani the honorable minister ma'am we warmly welcome you here in our midst may i request you to please join us on stage along with the conference director shri pranav gupta may i request shri ramesh mittal also to please join us on stage we will start by presenting an idol of goddess saraswati as well as a shawl as a token of welcome to the honorable minister ma'am ma'am it is our privilege to welcome you on behalf of federation of indian publishers may i request pranav ji to kindly present a shawl to the honorable minister ma'am and welcome her Ladies and gentlemen there she is on stage she has dared to demonstrate it to the whole world how a successful and a dynamic woman leader looks like so she needs no introduction to the august gathering in conversation here today with the conference director it's over to you thank you so much ma'am first of all on behalf of the federation of indian publishers i welcome you for this conference such an auspicious occasion 50 years of hard work of the federation has brought us over here well at the onset let me congratulate the federation for your stupendous achievement a glorious history of 50 years but also for effectively contributing to the knowledge systems and economy of the country those who are present here today and those in absentia i hope will receive my compliments not only as minister but also as a mother of two kids who read so thank you for your contribution ma'am i have a very limited time and <laughs> despite <laughs> despite all odds so we'll quickly jump on to the questions ma'am as a senior member of the honorable modi government where do you see the role of indian publishing industry in nation building i think what is important pranav is to recognize what are the current challenges that you face as an industry and what do i face as a consumer i'm a traditional book reader and though they have been interventions of the digital kind i have not managed to translate my book reading habit from a book in hand to a device but that is my generation the question is am i the last of my generation and are the generations after me in a position to forget the very beauty of reading a book rather than reading through a device now as an informed parent and i presume that i am one there are two challenges that confront parenting consumption of books and possibly will have an impact on the publishers who have gathered here today in 2014 i was the minister of education in the country OECD had then taken out a huge document for education ministers administrators around the world the document became a document of insistence with regards to change and the document said that the greatest educational intervention or innovation is education through a device suddenly you had parents buying laptops palm tops other smart devices to give it to their children because education through devices became the buzzword and any administrator who would not support it was declared as not innovative enough not modern enough in their approach i was a bit circumspect then because introduction of devices need to be age appropriate mercifully today after close to 8 9 years there is a recognition that there is an instance of cognitive decline in a child if the device is introduced too early mercifully today there's also enough evidence available medically through research that there is an impact on the cognitive components of even a middle aged or an older age human being when you read through a device it has an impact on the eye it has the impact of how that information is consumed 
I'm laying this foundation for two reasons. Why do you read a book? Some read because they have to depend on it for knowledge. Some read it for the love of reading. Now, if you are saying that you are becoming dependent on a book for knowledge, what is the balance between publishing a book physically and digitally that I'm sure federations and publications across the world will contemplate on? The second is that if you are publishing for knowledge, how much of our indigenous knowledge will you lose in the translation from a physical book to a digital book because many still do not popularize local languages. So most of our knowledge, we have 16,000 dialects, 125 languages which are constitutionally recognized. How many now publishing components exist, writers exist, who understand those 16,000 dialects and then translate them on? The second challenge is that while you are talking about publishing, and I'm sure publishers are happy to publish, how many of us have cultivated the habit of our progeny to read in those local languages? So I think that the problem is a bit more complex. The solution lies not only in publishers, but we have to have a holistic approach towards publishers, publishing, and book reading. And what are the skill sets that I want to possibly translate to my future generation in my home? Today we know that everybody talks about yoga karo or stress kam karo. Not many people also know that kitab padho sham ko sone se pehle, it helps in sleep readiness. So are we inculcating that as a methodology amongst our consumers? So I think that it has to be a collaboration between readers and publishers. You want to de-stress? Yes, meditate. Yes, do yoga. Begin your day well. But you want to de-stress and be sleep ready? Read a little. There are many now experts who are saying, stay away from a device one hour before sleep and one hour after you get up. So knowing the humankind, which is fidgety, what do you do in that one hour? You read. So can we use that expert advice now as a federation to say read for the love of reading, but read because some expert somewhere on the internet is telling you de-stress, leave the device behind, you have that one hour, what do you do? Read. So what we can derive from here is read India, lead India. I think that the government has pronounced many a projects. And given that in education, while I serve, we also had the copyright under that same wing. The issue is not the issue pertaining to law, legality. It is to illustrate why reading is still essential. Not because you want to pursue something academically, but because you want to pursue something inherently to make yourself better. We have stopped teaching that in our society at large. Anything we pursue has to have a goal. So what is the goal that you're giving people? How many, today we have lovely singers who began this day so poignantly. Now how many of them are singing because they want to be the next Arijit Singh? How many of them are singing out of the pure joy of singing? That will distinguish where they reach in life. So how many of us are reading for the joy of reading? And how many of us are reading that if you don't read this, then exam will not be done, but the project will not be done, but PPT will not be able to show you. So are we also, let's say, in a professional environment, teaching professionals, PPT will not be able to show you in the office, what will you do before? Because everything Google tells you is not sacrosanct. So earlier when we wanted to update our knowledge, we would run, find somebody who has access to a library. Now, all we do is Google. Absolutely. What we have seen, ma'am, in over the past many years, like <coughs> the book reading habit is not inculcated much at the school level. Because we are thinking that the whole responsibility of 
टीचर ने नहीं सिखाया था माँ बाप ने सिखाया था दादा दादी ने सिखाया था नाना नानी ने सिखाया था इफ यू स्टार्ट हैविंग द सेम एक्सपेक्टेशन स्कूल पढ़ाए स्कूल पढ़ाए स्कूल पढ़ाए आई वी नॉट एबडिकेटिंग आर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एज फैमिली हु गेव यू योर फर्स्ट बुक अन्य प्रश्न में हु गेव यू योर फर्स्ट मील योर फैमिली डिड योर स्कूल कैंटीन डिड नॉट गिव इट एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट सो आई एम अ हाफ बंगाली इट्स अ हैपन स्टैंड इन अ गुड वन दैट आई मेट समबडी फ्रॉम माय ननिहाल राइट नाउ हैपेंस टू बी अ साइंटिस्ट वी इन आवर पार्ट ऑफ कल्चर नॉट ओनली हैव द फर्स्ट स्पून ऑफ खीर इन अन्न प्रश्न वी ऑल्सो हैव द फर्स्ट टाइम अ चाइल्ड होल्ड्स अ कलम एंड किताब so instead of saying school school how many of us can inculcate irrespective of what culture you belong to religion you belong to uh, the significance of that small ritual saraswati puja i as a kid used to be very excited that day because the rumor was us din kitab nahi padni hai so as bangali you were told aaj ke i mean ghosh babu hai to janen आज के यू डोंट रीड सो आर एंटायर फोकस वॉज वेन इज द नेक्स्ट सरस्वती पूजा बट द मिनिट यू से आज के यू कैन रीड फिर अंदर से होता था अरे आज पढ़ नहीं पा रहे सो वेर इज दैट ब्यूटी ऑफ योर वेरी इनहेरेंट कल्चर एंड वाई हैव वी शिफ्टेड द डिस्कोर्स दैट इंस्टीट्यूशन हैव टू टीच आर किड्स टू लर्न वी हैव टू टीच सो विल यू नाउ चेंज योर फोकस as a federation as a publisher reach out to families because families have to bring up children wherever in the world the family system is failing so is everything else absolutely i agree because my, my intent was only that school has a larger impact on a student life no doubt like for example it has an impact yeah. but remember school is only 4 oh, to 5 oh. hours of a day the rest of the 20 hours is with family with society at large so there was a time and i remember this because i've lived both in delhi and mumbai i would have a local library i would have to give a monthly local library fee of 5 rupees go and buy any book how many of those libraries survive today not the government ones we used to have the private libraries and declaration here today pranav if you look at my life history my father used to sell books on a pavement outside army club in dholakwa on top of a chaddar so i am a book seller's kid so this is the fact probably the industry on if you go to the <laughs> anand niketan market right now you will find a small wooden box between shops which is locked that is another place my father used to sell books out of so we graduated from the footpath to anand niketan market so you're talking to a bookseller's daughter <laughs> the issue is who teaches you what to read you have a library full of different books i've never read a mills and boons in my life i've picked up a nancy drew a hardy boys a panchatantra a amar chitra katha so what to read also is a habit that has to be inculcated now pranav discovers i'm a bookseller's daughter <laughs> <laughs> ma'am your government has been quite instrumental in making india a manufacturing hub the honorable prime minister's vision of make in india and where do you think the publishing industry fits in the vision of the prime minister again i think that recognition is essential and i'm sorry i'm known to be very very blunt we can ready everything for manufacturing today you have from banks supporting manufacturers to industries recognizing the importance of you employ close to 1.2 million people in the country Correct. but i think that is a smaller lot you also employ so many small small people who uh, still function as libraries still sell books the issue is let's say the pli on medical devices there has been a huge surge of demand let's say pli in other devices like smartphones and laptops there's a huge surge 
So while the government is committed to ensuring that you get the support that you rightfully deserve, the issue is, first can we focus on ensuring a surge in demand? So till such time that we don't complement our intervention, which are obviously now available financially, policy initiatives which are available for the industry, we, I think, and again, as a bookseller's daughter and a book reader, I think we need to also look at the surge that we need to create in terms of demand. Absolutely, I do agree. So uh, if we talk about the industry, we have been facing a lot of issues, and one of the major issues from the industry perspective, I'll speak, is the copyright, the infringement happens. And especially after the post-COVID, the disruption happened due to the digital, you know, the PDFs, the scanned versions of the books being circulated over Telegram, WhatsApp, and then this photocopying in the educational institutions. I would say it has almost become a parallel industry. Today, my industry almost contributes 80,000 crore plus revenue to the uh, GDP of the country. But all the piracy and this photocopying has become a parallel industry which really affects the business. And plus, the content creators, the right holders, they are not being significantly remunerated. And well, I'm also a book writer. So uh, as somebody who has a published book called Lal Salam, uh, let me say two, three things. When a writer is new, there is a compulsion to just get it printed. No writer who is new is genuinely informed of their publishing rights properly or the right to leverage it at what platform when or responsibility towards a publisher. We need to create more discourse between content creators and the publishing world to recognize that gap and to fill it, one. Second, yes, the pandemic brought a lot of disruption. It brought a lot of disruption through a lot of platforms that were technologically mm -hmm. enabling a transfer of knowledge. You as a federation need to speak to those platforms directly if they are in contravention of Indian law. Nothing stops you from it. And because you are a federation and it's not the fight of one publisher alone, I believe it will have a lot of impact. Insofar as post your conversation with the platforms, and especially now that the data protection bill has also been uh, awesome. passed in both houses of parliament, I think that the privilege of law to protect you exists. The issue is how much do you get to exercise it. Many I know within the publishing fraternity don't want the headache of the confrontation. But the issue is, either you confront realities or be consumed by it. Absolutely, ma'am. So if we uh, think from this perspective, when we talk about uh, the books, book, uh, the publishing industry has been always seen more from a layman perspective more as a printing industry. Yes. OK, or just a typical book selling. And whereas if our economic contribution is talked about, it may be very less in terms of uh, versus the other industries. But we as an industry feel we have a larger impact on the qualitative aspect of it, which potentially, you know, a lot of people in the bureaucracy at the government level doesn't recognize that. Do you think, can we get the magic touch of the Honorable Prime Minister? The very the fact that you have the Prime Minister's message is a recognition that you are important for not only government, not only civil society, but also the country's knowledge system. I must say, ladies and gentlemen, now Shev and Mittal Saab and Pranav met me first, they were a bit taken aback for the sheer respect I had for publishers and the federation. You are less than I think that you have chosen to be voiceless. You speak only through print. The issue is that the print needs a voice now. 
not the print that you see in newspapers. Even they are reducing their presence on paper. They are going digital. You're the last standing bastion of a feel and a look and a see print. And you need to be heard now. And I, with my presence here today, would like to confirm that for the Council of Ministers under Prime Minister Modi, we recognize your contribution to our country. <laughs> but as a bookseller's daughter, as a writer myself, I would not want to sit at the sidelines and watch that voice diminish. You have to stand up. You have millions like me standing right behind you because we owe our academic existence, we owe our cognitive understanding of our knowledge systems to publishers of this country. So the power, power, power of the pen has to be showcased, has to be justified. The power of the pen never has to be justified. The issue is that when this phrase was written, there was no internet. The power of the pen is now competing with the power of the mouse, the laptop, the smartphone. The issue is, you have to tell people ki kitab expiry date ke saath nahi aati. You have to tell people that this is the only system of knowledge that does not have to be plugged in. You have to tell people that this is a knowledge system that you need to give to the next generation physically. Correct. Laptops will expire. Smartphones keep changing. Absolutely. And till such time, you don't get up. I can carry on my shoulders till you don't speak. You will not be heard. Absolutely, ma'am. So considering the time we have, ladies and gentlemen, it was an absolute pleasure Thank having you. Madam Smithy Zuman Evrani <laughs> speaking with us. Ma'am, before you leave, we have created a souvenir on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of the Federation of Indian Publishers. Would, we would kindly request you to release the same. And may I invite <laughs> Mr. Ashok K. Ghoshji, Ramesh Mittal Ji, President, Dr. Ashok Gupta and Naveen Gupta Ji to come on this stage and release the souvenir along with the Ladies and gentlemen, on the momentous occasion of 50 years in the Golden Jubilee, the Federation of Indian Publishers has published a souvenir. It is entitled, The Words of Wisdom, Words of Vision, Indian Publishers at the Rate 2047. It has received messages from think tank and leaders like Sri Piyush Goelji, Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry, Sri Narendra Singh Tomar, Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Shri Dharmendra Pradhanji, Honorable Minister of Education, Shri Parshottam Ropala, Honorable Minister of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dating, Shri Thavarchand Gehlot, Honorable Governor of Karnataka, Shri Rajkumar Ranjanji, Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs and Education, Honorable Justice, Shri Naveen Chavla, Honorable Justice, Jasmeet Singh, Honorable Justice, Amit Bansal of Delhi High Court and many other Indian political leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is, the souvenir, the words of vision, Indian Publishing at the rate 2047. Hello, check. Ma'am, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you here and it's always, always a pleasure to listen to you. What an enlightening conversation we had. See you.